Hi, everyone. My name is Ricardo Alvarez Pimentel, and I am graduating this year with my doctorate in history. I'm very excited to be one of this year's recipients of the Theron Rockwell Field Prize. And I wanna go ahead and begin by congratulating my fellow winners in what I'm sure is fantastic work. I'd also like to take a moment to thank my doctoral advisor, Gilbert Joseph in the history department, as well as other members of my committee for supporting this research before, during, and after the COVID-19 pandemic. Lastly, I wanna begin by also thanking my family who's with me here today for supporting me ever since I set foot on Yale campus the first year of my graduate school program in 2014. I couldn't have done it without any of you, so thank you. The title of my dissertation is From Secret War to Cold War, Race, Catholicism, and the Unmaking of Counter-Revolutionary Mexico, 1917 to 1946. Essentially, my dissertation explores a counter-revolutionary religious movement that tried to undo the consequences of Mexico's seemingly progressive 1910 revolution. Some of the legacies of this revolution included separation between church and state manifested in anti-clerical policies, the mandating of secular and socialist education for all Mexican youth, the nationalization of the economy, greater rights for women and indigenous workers, etc. I study the movements that opposed all of those measures as spearheaded by upper class, middle and upper class Catholic women and youth groups. Now, my dissertation traces a very interesting evolution of political ideologies. Beginning in 1917, I began to talk about this movement as one that espoused and adopted predominantly democratic and liberal ideals in its fight against anti-clerical authoritarianism. However, by the 1930s, we begin to see that the same movement began to adopt authoritarian political models and even flirt with fascism for reasons which I will explain in just a second. Finally, by the early 1940s, we begin to see a convergence of church and state interest and the effective end of the counter-revolution as it integrated itself to the Mexican post-revolutionary state. My dissertation essentially argues that the reason for these transformations was racist, and the reason why this movement essentially failed was racism. My dissertation demonstrates that this was a movement that was driven and undone primarily by perceptions and notions of whiteness. And it takes the religious discourse as presented by these organizations and analyzes the racialized dimensions, sometimes lying in the subtext of what was being explicitly conveyed. Thus, my dissertation traces the evolution of racism in Mexican society, just as it traces the evolution of this counter-revolutionary movement from a secret war that was fought between church and state, not just in Mexico, but also across the Atlantic, particularly in countries like Spain and the US, to a cold war that brought church and state together and their joint interest to suppress working class indigenous mobilization. I look forward to talking more about this work throughout today, tomorrow, and even after. Feel free to follow me on Twitter actually, at rAlvarezPI. I'd like to take a moment to thank the committee again for rewarding my work with this recognition. And I'd also like to take a moment to congratulate the members of the class of 2022. Congratulations. Hello, I'm Anna Dunsing, graduating with a PhD from the Department of History and African American Studies. I'm a historian of the United States and the modern world, specializing in African American history, Black internationalism, and the evolving politics of white supremacy in the United States across the 20th century. And I'm a 2022 winner of the Porter Prize for my dissertation, Fascists Without Labels, Jim Crow, Civil Rights, and the Making of a Black Anti-Fascist Tradition, 1933 to 1977. Fascists Without Labels chronicles a diffuse network of Black radical thinkers, activists, and their grassroots multiracial coalitions as they organized to sound alarm over homegrown fascism in the United States, initially during the age of Jim Crow. 
In addition to identifying and combating white supremacists who actively work to merge fascist ideologies, practices, and aesthetics with distinctly American political traditions, these figures confronted what they identified as undeniable parallels, echoes, and overlaps between global fascism and the normal daily functioning of politics in the United States. My work illuminates the richness of the Black anti-fascist tradition of the 1930s and 1940s, yet my research is ultimately focused on tracking the way these figures mobilized in the post-war period against fascist afterlives possessing segregationists and their supporters, and those many lawmakers, state officials, and everyday white people who remained deeply committed to a politics of white supremacy and to anti-Black violence, even after Jim Crow's ostensible demise with the civil rights triumphs of the 1960s. My dissertation offers a history of Black radicalism and modern conservatism in conversation and in contestation. It tells the story of white supremacy, racial nationalism, vigilantism, and state violence in the United States, while elevating a globally-minded Black freedom struggle in which Black radical thinkers, activists, civil rights leaders, and everyday people vigilantly analyzed and underscored the practices and processes that kept fascism alive in this country. Anti-fascism, I argue, was a central element of Black activist struggles for justice and liberation across the 20th century, and it is essential history for understanding and navigating our present moment. Thanks very much for this award, and congratulations to everyone graduating this year. Hi, I'm Jill Tan, a third-year PhD candidate in anthropology. I study death and dying in Singapore and work with the funeral profession. As a writer, artist, and researcher, I'm committed to collaborative practice and multimodal exploration through games, performance, and poetics. I'm a 2022 winner of the Field Prize. My prize submission is entitled Notes on the Bicentennial of a Floundering, 2019. This multimedia work of hybrid poetry, which is video, sculpture, and performance elements, grew out of my poem essay of the same title on British imperialism in Singapore. This, through this work, I explore how my subjectivity as a Singaporean has resulted in an entrenched misrecognition of colonial violence as a birthmark rather than a scab. As a Singaporean who has been taught not to notice how the enduring violence of imperial corporate power structures my way in the world, I began making this work to reflect upon 2019 as the bicentennial of the British colonization of Singapore in 1819. This work takes several forms, its origin as poetic text, voiced as part of a soundscape, and as a visually and materially mediated archival object wherein paper pulp is molded into sculpture, on film, and in performance. In my work, I explore how, as a method and expression of inquiry, the poetic holds within itself a built-in resistance to foreclosure. I find that the poetic is a bespoke contraption for mapping out gestures which also embody the qualities of research design that I seek in my ethnographic practice as an anthropologist. The poetic moves and is moved by the ethnographic object in motion. Following its charge can be a way of writing and doing ethnography that instantiates and creates, yet seeks to flow and force. In making this work, the poetic lent the dual modalities of accretion and attrition, and a visual rather than textual literacy using not only reductions and illusions, but cleavage and sequence to build my case of a lost consciousness. As I moved through building by way of unlearning, I thought of this hybrid poem not only as a simulacrum of archi archival form and formulation, but as an entry in itself. I not only suggest the text status as archival object through formal mimesis of a historical document, but forge an archival encounter within it by excerpting and then deconstructing my own writings from 2009 on Singapore's national historical narratives. Poetics can serve as a pushback against the predisposition to its ossification of the post-colonial archive that narratives almost always feed into without deserting the literary entirely. Without as much stock placed in art and teleology, the poetic as a contraption for a contingent moving object destabilizes the archive upon entry. Thank you.